There is no rich man on earth that is a salary earner. There's no rich man on earth who is a salary earner? Yeah, no. None. Everyone that is wealthy today, they don't depend on salary alone. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Number two, there is no rich man on earth that has only one source of income. Never. Not one. Mm -hmm. Number three, every rich man on earth, all of them without fail, real estate is part of what they use to retain their wealth. In order for you to become rich and wealthy, number one, you need financial intelligence, you need delayed gratification, you need savings, you need multiple streams of income. I now began to practice also. That's when I started writing books. I've written over 100 books right now. Mm. Now, but the books were already in me. So today now, you see a lot of people out there, they have gifts, but they are not trading their gifts. Mm. Money flows in exchange for goods and services. Money flows in exchange for value. So that's your gift. You must turn it into a product or a service that you can exchange for money. Mm. You can be gifted and poor. People mm. can celebrate you and say, we have a lot mm. of, uh, you know, poor celebrity beggars now that are just celebrity by because they say they are in show business. They know the show. They don't know the business of the show. Mm. But the business that know the business of, the people that know the business of the show, nobody knows them. But they are the one making the real money. And that one is just doing bling, bling, poor man out there. And then they will now begin to cry that they, they use me. When you <laughs> sign, your eye don't clear. They force you. It's poverty that made you to sign. You signed it as a poor man. Now you have seen glory. Now you, you will serve your sentence. Mm. Do you understand now? So, so I don't know if... Yeah, yeah. no, this is, this is really very, very eye-opening. Mm. But I go like ask, you know, they go tell everybody, say, oh, go school, education, and all. People go, if we go by the, you know, the system in Nigeria here, mm -hmm. six years primary school, <sighs> six years secondary study school. Study these, four study years economy, university. study banking and finance. And okay. the whole idea is, once you acquire this education, you, work for you, will, break, you will break free from <laughs> the shackles of poverty. You're good to go. Mm, no, and no. you are good to go. <laughs> but it won't be like, say, the school, what is that they the teachers not be waiting? Okay, so le let's understand this. Because the challenge we have is that we don't realize that change is the only constant in life. Mm -hmm. What is true today may be a lie tomorrow, tomorrow. but it doesn't mean it was not true yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is true today may be a lie, a lie tomorrow, tomorrow, but it doesn't, but it doesn't mean it was mean not true, true yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's because life is lived forward but understood backward. And as we evolve, we learn. Everybody here, there's one statement you have made in your life. Ah, if I know... If I knew what, what I, I know, know now, now. Yeah. everybody on earth, if you have never made that statement, you are a madman. <sighs> that means you are not growing. Mm -hmm. It was during the industrial age that education came. Mm. So during the industrial age, education was set up to take people from the farming slave to factory slave. Mm. Mm. So they now say, okay, all the intelligent ones that are here now, let's gather them because this guy, like, he gets some brain. If you tell them something, if they know how to plant, they answer, put them together and create a curriculum and teach them so that they will know how to undo the factory. Mm. Because from orange, we need to produce orange juice. Mm -hmm. And we need to... So they now created courses. Okay, this is accounting. This is chemistry. Question. Hmm. The, the, the first person that became an accountant, who, who certified him? <laughs> so somebody sat down and said, come, let's create... I do curriculum now, so I know what I'm talking about. Mm. I've created curriculum that does not exist before that I created. And it's now existing because I created it. So somebody said, okay, let's do one, we call it accounting. But that person that was creating the curriculum, he himself is not certified. Mm. Because nobody certified. He's now the pioneer and the progenitor mm -hmm, of a new... Mm -hmm. That's how all these courses were created. And it was not... It was, schools were not created to make you rich. They were created to discipline and train you to function the way those that need you want you to function. Mm. So if you meet with elderly people in their 70s or in their 80s, and they are to ask you, they won't ask you what course do you study. They will say, what is your discipline? Mm. Mm. That's what they, they won't say, what course do you study? Yes. They will say, what is your discipline? That means what have you been disciplined to become? That's why all your life, you have an identity. You go to school, when you come out, they say, what's this? I say, I'm doctor, I'm engineer. You forget your name. You now start introducing yourself with the title they give you. Because you went to school to be trained to become what they want you to become. So there was nothing wrong in education mm -hmm. in the days of our parents. But what they did not realize was that the colonial masters were using this for a purpose. That is why we still have the problems today. So when you go to school, they teach you to become this, and then you become a But the world has evolved. We have moved from industrial age now. We are now in the age of technology. We are in what we call the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. The fifth one is imagine now. So all those things now, don't forget that when we were growing up, if you say you want to be an actor, you say, ah, hear me, you want to be a footballer, mm. hey, village people. Today, now everybody wants that child to be a footballer. But all those things have now expired. Now everybody wants to move to the next level, IT. Tech. and all the tech. So, tech that's the way. so now, <laughs> when you go to school, you learn, you come to use. But in order for them to keep you for five years or four years, they have to teach you what you need and what you don't need. Mm. 
And most of the textbook were given by the Westerners mm -hmm. to deceive you. That's why they would say Mongo Park came to discover you. Mm -hmm. Are you are you all right? Mongo Park. So you, you exist. Then somebody can't discover you. If you didn't exist, will you be discovered? <laughs> you say you are discovered. It's because of all these problems. So now, eight over eighty percent of what you learn in school today is useless when you graduate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over eighty percent. Yes. yes. Over it's useless. Why the YDX? Mm -hmm. Over eighty percent is useless. <laughs> now, number two, the world that existed. When you do, is it the matric they will do first? I become vocation. Matric first, vocation <laughs> last. The world that existed when you did matric, by the time you are doing convocation with the next gown, that world is no more in existence. Because every five years, there's a new world. 19, 20, 2000, uh, 2019 and now are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Pre COVID, post COVID. Mm. Mm. Before, in 2019, nobody will ask you, is it Vatua? Mm. Mm. It was not in our vocabulary. That's a new world. Before 2019, nobody will say, I want to work remotely. So if you are still now oppressing, no, you cannot do this. It's because you are still an analog mind in a yes. digital age. Mm. You don't realize that things have changed. Mm. Mm. So companies are now rewriting policies, rewriting HR policy. Why? Because it's a new world. So people that are now telling you go to school, go and study this, go and study that, they are not bad people, but they are expired people. Mm. They are sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. They are telling you to go and do something that is useless. They are telling you to go and prepare to solve problem of yesterday mm. instead of preparing you to solve tomorrow's problem. So today, if like 15 years ago, if you say you are a drone pilot, it's not, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm into animation. I'm into gaming. It doesn't exist. So if you now go to your mother now, your father, mother, maybe like chief, we dress like you say, uh, daddy, uh, and, uh, and uh, study <laughs> animation. So, what, what, what? Are you an animal? <laughs> Are you an animal? Are you an animal? <laughs> That's the way it true, is. True. Many of the comedians, footballers, actors, and actresses today, their parents disowned them when they went to Nollywood. Mm -hmm. Disowned them when they went to music. Today, everybody wants their children too. That's the same way parents are disowning their children now. For saying, you are just jobless, you don't want to go to school. What is animation? What is this? Because they don't realize. So, in our own days, people were sent to school to go and study a course that will put a prefix before their name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Engineer, doctor, Barista. architect, barrister. Lawyer. Because most of the parents wanted to live Barista. through the life of their children. Mm. Yeah. So what they could not achieve, they want to achieve I'm through the life lawyer. of their children. children. I'm, I'm a doctor. I'm a but now those things are, they are useless <laughs> now. <laughs> so am I saying don't go to school? No, we need to redefine the education. As a matter of fact, you can go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Lumide Manuel on YouTube. I just did a series this last October. So most of those series you people see is October I do because the whole of October in our church, I focus on finance. So it was October 2022 that I did before you joined the Jackpot bandwagon. I did a whole series on that just to help because nobody said don't Jackpot but face reality before you go. Then I've done savings culture. Now I've now done redefining education mm. part one to four just to help you understand. Look, all this one we look, one of my guys because many parents now, the majority of what they spend their money on is our strength feeding and school fees. Yes. To go and spend money. Many of us keep our life on hold to train children for 15, 17 years mm. to go and study a course that will be useless to them and useless to us because we are still living in those days. So many of these courses, they are no more relevant. So go to school to study a course that will solve today and tomorrow's problem, problem. not yesterday's problem. Because with the advent of AI, fourth industrial revolution, animatics, robotics, 3D printing, forget it all. All these courses you are studying is useless. So if you say you are doing medical doctor, medicine is expiring. Right now, medicine has expired up to 70%. We are 30% of medicine because there is nothing you want to do in medicine that AI cannot do, that machine cannot do, that robots cannot do. So if you are going to study medicine now, you are wasting your life away. Mm. And people are still starting now. They are entering school year one mm. to go and do seven years and they will spend 50,000, 100,000. They will spend money, dollar, borrow money, student loan for the next 15 years. Now, why am I saying don't do that? Because the need are limited. So if we used to need 2 billion doctors, now we need 500,000. Just using that as a status. Mm -hmm. So the need is now reduced. And if all of you are rushing there, you will have nothing to do. So go and do my research. Fact check this. Mm -hmm. Majority of people now have master's degree that they are not using. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because by the time they finish school, no job. Oh yeah, Kukubula is a master. Saila is a master. They'll do master. By the time they now want to get a job, they will now use the BSc to go and get a job because they can't get a job. So there are a lot of people with masters now working with the lower degree. So what is all that? You're a master over nothing. Why? Because schools don't teach you financial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to school. When you now finish the school, you now want to look for a job. Who should now create the job? Mm, that so you're any looking education for. that is not teaching you how to become a job creator is a useless education. Mm. Any education that is not equipping you to begin to earn and add value to the environment is a expired education. So we're not saying don't go to school, mm -hmm. get us right. Mm -hmm. But we're saying if you are going to go to school, the way the creator intended it is, everybody is born with gift, talent, and potential. Mm -hmm. 
Everything that the spider needs to spin a web is inside the spider. Mm. Your gold is tied to your gift. Your treasure is tied to your talent. Your profit is tied to your potential. So the way you're supposed to do is discover what you have. Then you now go and train to develop what you have. Mm. Then you deploy it. So if you know you are... People have studied medicine that are now fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have studied architecture that are now cooks. So if you know you are a cook... Once you have discovered that he's cooking, you know, go to cooking school straight. Spend one year and start selling. Sorry, he said something. That when when you when you realize what it is that you have inside, learn, I mean, go and study that. Now, how do people realize that thing that they have? Because I've had this question asked so many times. How do I know my gifts? Organi, do you know you can act? You know you can present? You know you can do this? How do I know mine? I, so how would you say that they can find out what gifts they have okay, so that so they can horn it more? Let me let me run through that. Uh, coincidentally, the answer is actually in the, the school of money book, uh, things with the book. Mm. But you see, number one, that's where parenting starts from. Mm. Unfortunately, we have a lot of children are getting married to children, dysfunctional man getting married to dysfunctional woman, starting dysfunctional marriages, raising dysfunctional children, mm. and that's why we have dysfunctional society. Normally, it is the parents' job mm. to identify. You don't have children. God gives you children. children to be a steward over them. Part of what you steward is to steal. The children are arrows. You arrow does not fly. Arrow cannot do anything. You have to, you are the bow, they are the arrow. Mm. So when God gives you an arrow, you are supposed to now shoot. shoot them. The more you pull them back, the more they can go further. Mm. So you are supposed to look at it, I think this girl likes this. So many people have discovered that their daughter likes dancing and acting. Never, my daughter dance, I know she must be medical doctor. They now divert the destiny of their children. Mm. So it's when you identify, you start sending her to ballet school, start sending her to music school. That before you know it, by the time she's 16, she's already having her own business and she's doing what she needs to do. So it begins with parents identifying it. If parents don't identify it, then these are the things you need to look for. So if you are listening to me right now, number one, what do you love to do? What is that thing that you love doing it? Mm. That you just love it? What is that thing that if you are doing it, you don't get tired. It comes easy. It just comes easy. People will struggle. I've written over 100 books today. How did I know I was good at writing? It's this, I just love writing. And what is that thing that is so easy for you to do, but difficult for others, others to, do? to do? Because when I discovered this writing, I was in school in Polytechnic, and then we're in what they call this, uh, is it literally a debate or this press club or something? Mm -hmm. So they'll just say, write about this, uh, submit next to I say, one that just reached out to the next day, say, ah. I say, ah, this is your flow. Ah. Then I'll hear people say, I've been trying to write a book for three years. I say, ah, they have writer's block. I'm like, ah, what's that? Me, where are they? I've written, I've written mm -hmm. eight books in one day before. This school of money, I wrote it in nine days. This one, I wrote it in five days. This book here, I just went to my house in London, sat down for one week, pa, no sleeping, blah, 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 just, that's what I write. People wonder, I say, is it goes, no, I type, I used to write with paper and biro. I only recently started typing. I'm old school like that. Why is grace? So when I realized, that, oh, this thing is grace, I sat down there. I began to develop it. So what then what is that thing that even if they don't pay you, you will still do it? Yes. Mm. Those are your passion. <laughs> then number four, what are the things that people see and say about you? Mm. You see a lot of people, they say, ah, you two talk. Oh, you know, those are, that means something about your mouth. There's something about your mouth. So when a woman was talking about the fact that they say your, your, your child talks too much, he talks too much, he talks too much, he too, they complain, complain. God say, why are you complaining? Pray for him that mm. God will give him something to say mm. that people will pay for. Mm. Mm. And that's how the woman changed it. And the, the guy is a major guy now, charging $40,000 to do one hour speech. Mm. So you, what are the things that people are saying about you? Sometimes you are not a pastor, you say, I pastor this, they'll be calling you a lawyer, a lawyer, a engineer. They are calling you what they are saying. Mm. Next, what are the things that you find, people find it easy to support you about? There are some things you want to do, nobody wants to support you. But some things, they say, if you want to do that, I will support you. Say, ah, why am I? Because... Provision. Where there is a vision, there is a provision. Mm. So pro, we go for vision. So whatever you find it easy for people to support you, when you ask for it, people are ready to help you. Even when you're there, if you are ready for this, I will do it. Ah, why are they ready to pay for this one? Where I won't do, they're not ready. That means there's something there. Yeah. So those are all the signs. That what are the things that you can give 100 percent of your life to? Mm. That if that's all you have to do, you do it. Those are the pointers to what your passion is. What are the experiences you have gone through that you have conquered? Because God always brings us out of a misery and create a ministry out of that misery. Mm. So most of the time, people that are into healing ministry, they have been sick before. Mm. People that are into prosperity ministry, they have been poor before. Mm. Most of the time, God brings you out to send you back to where he brought you out from. To go and set people free with the same freedom he has given you. Mm. So, But in this part of the world, we want to hide our past and hide our experiences. Mm. But those are the pointers to your future because vision is hindsight. 
based on uh, vision is foresight, based on insight with the benefit of hindsight. Mm. So vision is foresight. Ah, where do I see God taking me to? From the way I'm feeling, I think this is the direction. Based on that experience, I think that's why I went through it. That's why I went through that. This is where I should go. That's what vision is. It's the unfolding of that dimension. So, I mean, so you talked about the, like, doing what you love. I know a lot of people that have done what they love, <laughs> but because they did not know the business aspect of it, mm. they ended up poor. And I think that the business aspect of it also has to do with schooling, going to some sort of school. But school. if you know being educated, being, being educated, educated, yes. <laughs> being educated, going to some sort of, you know, place where you get educated on the yeah. business aspect. A lot of people delve into what they love so much. Oh, like, oh, you I love to dance. Cook and you go, I love to cook. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to use myself as an example. I was my rice is awesome. So I would cook and I would give and I would give and I would sell for a particular price. And one of my customers was like, this is not the price I'm buying it at this place. But this is two times better than this other okay, place yeah. that I'm buying it. Why are you underpricing yeah. yourself? Okay. I had to sit back and... So let me help you understand. Now listen, for you to ever succeed in business, mm. you need technical skills and business skills. So you are a good cook, technical skill. You don't, it doesn't mean you succeed in business. You are a fashion designer, you can sew clothes. It doesn't mean you succeed in fashion business. So you need business skill. So now you can cook, that's technical skill. Do you know how to get customer? Mm. Do you know how to price? Mm. Do you know how to manage money? Do you know how to manage crisis? That is business skill. So what needs to happen is you now need to partner. So you have the technical skill and then you get someone that has a business skill and then you run a restaurant. You are behind the scene making sure the food is good, all the recipe is good, but the person is the one in charge of the business. You may even be the owner that have 80%, but the person is the one everybody will know that has the 20%. So he's doing the show, you are doing the business. But if you have ego that they must know me, now me get the business, show me for a poster, show me for this, then you are not ready. Mm. Because you achieve more when you don't care who gets the credit. Mm. Mm. But when you want to be the one, think about it. All the musicians we know today that we are shouting that they are making this, do you know they have manager? Do you know mm -hmm. they have manager? The manager is making more money than them. Yeah. The people that manage them are collecting 70%. Mm -hmm. All those women that they shout in the game, now 30% though, now they shout though. Someone Somewhere they collect 70, in name, no day anywhere. It's just the one place, they do the business, nobody know them. Why? Because see, anytime you say anybody's name on Forbes list, they are all poor people. All those people who say on Forbes list, billionaires, they are all poor people. The richest people in the world, even Forbes, the entire Forbes family, they know not bond them well to mention the name of the rich person. Because they will call all the first people together and say, see now, you yes. are right. From your grandfather Forbes to now, yes. who gave you the authority to mention my name? Who are you to even call my name? Yes. But now we are celebrating Forbes because there is what they call hold money. The, rich, the real rich people, they, you don't see them on social media. You don't see them posting anything. So when you see all these small, small boys that have not seen anything now, bah, I bought car, I bought this. They are posting everything and frustrated everybody. Even the house where they borrow, <laughs> even the house where nobody their own, they are posting. No, no, no. Have you seen that when they come to post, I bought this car, I bought that car? No. Because if you have it, you have it. Mm. Most of these people that are flaunting it, they have a reason behind what they are doing. Do you know that people are going to, you know those cars at the airports that they will put there at mm. the airport? People mm. are going there to take pictures. Say, this is my latest car, landing now. Mm. Oh, those advert cars. Those advert cars, people <laughs> are doing that. <laughs> no, no, okay, uh, I don't know who saw, you know my car is out there. I'm a pastor on, in church on Sunday. Yeah. People will be going near my car. They'll be taking pictures. They'll be doing, I say, oh, wow. Mm. Maybe they want tap from the grace. It's for the aesthetic. It's for the aesthetic. Because of the automobile. No, what are they tapping? Because they're ready for pastor. No, no, but, but can, some can, can you tell tap you. to become a pilot? All those are all the nonsense. Mm. Can you tap to become a medical doctor? Mm. What are you tapping? It's covetousness and greed. Mm. Person who don't work for 35 years, you want tap. You are 26 years old. Now so that they tap. Most of because you see, look, I've told you earlier on, religion is more than just that the devil. Listen to me. Mm. Ignorance is not a demon. You can't cast it out. Mm. Many of the problems in our culture is ignorance. And you cannot pray your way out of a problem you behaved your way into. Hey, oh. So ah. people come to church oh. and they want a pastor to lay hands on them to become what they are not. I can't lay hands on you. I can't anoint you to become a pilot. 
So all this anointing for prosperity, anointing for this, you are just oh, sorry, the sorry. anointing as metric. Sorry, sorry. Wait. Real yeah. quick, real quick. Yeah. Okay, I need to sorry, hold on. Real quick. Yeah. Um, when you say you said something about prayer right now, that okay. you can you pray to God to make you a millionaire? What if you actually pray to God to make you a millionaire and he sends someone like David to give you like 20 million <laughs> and you start a business from that? Is that prayer not answered? Okay, so you see, one thing you need to understand is this. Thank God I'm here so I can help you. Mm. Mm. You see, if I give you 10 million now, you are not a millionaire. You have millions. Yes. Mm. A millionaire is who you are. Millions is what you have. Mm. Hey! Hey! So when you understand the way this works, so if you are a 5 million naira person mm. and I give you 20 million, until that 20 million becomes 5 million, your brain will not work. Mm. Mm. You will waste it, you will give people, you will buy what you don't need because everything, money will come to your level of internal atmosphere. The more you learn, the more you earn. Your learning capacity determines your earning capacity. And if you, so if you're a family, so you will buy iPhone, buy this, spend money. When you remain 5 million, you say, ah, what do I do with this money? That's when your brain will start working. Mm. Is that somebody that jumps out of a 3,000 uh, bungee jumping, they now say, when it's 10,000, remove your parachute. That's when your brain will work. If you are a 10 million person and I give you 1 million, that money will go to 10 million by the time. So most of the time we are thinking of urgent uh, 2K, give me this, give me that. No, no, no. Become. Read your Bible. This mm. born again, born again thing we are talking about. Read it. When the man came to Jesus, we are always thinking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yes. He's focused on what, what must I do? And God said, no, except a man, be. You must be. Being is more important than doing. Mm. Mm. When you become it, you have to become rich to attract riches. You have to become wealthy to attract wealth. So you have to focus on becoming the kind of person that can be entrusted See with that money. it to get it. So you have to become it. Eesh. So what must I do? What's not? So when I'm saying what I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about. You have to become it. So we should focus on becoming the kind of person that can be trusted with that kind of resources. Because there's kingdom wealth, there's worldly wealth. In the kingdom, kingdom wealth is not acquired. Kingdom wealth is entrusted. Mm. He has to trust you before he can put wealth in your hand. In the world, you can make money through Babylon and all those stuff. But at the end of the day, you see what happens to the life of people. What of look people? At and it's really very, very clear. And, you know, just listening to this conversation, you know, reminiscing on how many years that one must have spent to acquire education and getting to know certain elements that if you put them to use or you deploy the right uh, action, mm. you're definitely going to see results. It's really very, very mind-blowing. And parents have a very, very important role to play. Dr. Olumide gave us the, uh, Pastor Olumide gave us the example of um, the mother that would say, you talk too much, you talk too much, you talk too much. Mm -hmm. But when he called the ally, he said, that talk too much, when that picking, they talk. Money. That's something when they say, if they use and well, <laughs> now, see the person they benefit from them. So parents should always pay attention. Elderly people who should know, should always pay attention. Try as much as you can to identify quickly and see how you can guide them. 